Hello, this is Randy Smith with Vicinity Brew Software. I'm going to take just a couple of minutes to walk through the process of creating a log within Vicinity Brew for a fermentation log, a packaging log, or a brew log, and uh, walk through the process of updating the activity, say uh, usage of raw material and putting something on hand, to give you an appreciation for uh, what a user might do on a daily basis within Vicinity Brew. Within Vicinity Brew, there are a couple of ways in which a brew log can be created. I can create it from the schedule or the calendar, which I'm about to show you. You could also create it from the brew log entry screen as well. In this case, what I want to do is tell the system that I'm wanting to create a log in my calendar. Uh, I'm Right now, I'm showing all of my activity, brewing, fermenting, and packaging. Let's go ahead and just limit that to the brew house so I can see the calendar associated with the brew house. Now a lot of this activity was created on my behalf by our MRP or material requirements process, uh, re material requirement planning uh, system. So the system is suggesting that I do a number of brews. Uh, I can also go and create a brew manually if I want to. Uh, so in this case, I can just double click anywhere I want to brew and it brings up a planned order screen that allows me to, to tell the system what I want to make. In this case, I want to uh, make my IPA wort, so I'm going to brew uh, my IPA wort, and I'm going to tell the system that I want to make 100 barrels. Uh, my brew house in my demo system is a 50 barrel brew house, and so uh, this can be uh, saved as 100 barrels, and I can tell the system that I want to brew this in two different brews. So what I just did is I created a planned order and set it out on the schedule and I can move it around on my calendar and get it to exactly where I want. Eventually, I probably want to take one of these planned orders, uh, this isn't actually a brew log yet, and I can go and I can create multiple uh, brew logs directly from this planned order. So we have a concept of convert this planned order to brews. And what it will do is create two different brew logs for me so that the brew house knows that I'll be brewing 50 barrels at a time. So whether I keep them as planned orders or whether I convert them to brew logs, eventually what's going to happen is I will go and start recording activity. So I'm going to use this same navigation. I'll be using this calendar to basically have the brew house identify what they're going to brew and when they're going to brew it. So if I'm in the brew house now, I can double click on a brew log and open up my brew log and I'm now entering data. Uh, let me shrink this down just a little bit for demo purposes. Make the screen just a little bit smaller. Um, and in this case, uh, there's a good bit of information that I can work with in the brew house. Um, we, we have the ability to define out the brewing process, the different pieces of equipment, the different processes associated with brewing. So all the instructions and the machine settings and things like that that you're interested in, in communicating to the brew house can be put into the uh, brewing formula. The most important parts to be looking at really is this uh, issue now and the quantity required. The quantity required are the quantities of these raw material items, malt, malt 2, malt 3, and the descriptions are right here. Um, I'm going to enter the quantities that I actually use in the issue now column, and the quantity required is the, is the quantity that I actually need to be um, putting into the vessel. Um, know that all these columns can be moved uh, however you want them to be displayed. So I can optimize this for uh, if I've got a small screen or maybe I'm running this on a tablet or whatever, I can make it really easy uh, to, to just enter the data that I need. When I'm ready, I can just tell the system that I'm ready to start recording raw materials used. So in this case, I put in 850 pounds of my first malt of my two row and 300 pounds of another, etc. I can come in and tell the system the exact quantity that I that I put in. So let's say I put in 500 and I mean 852 pounds for whatever reason. I can do that. And this item happens to be a lot tracked item. And so it's showing me all the lots that I have available uh, to pick from. And I can um, select a single lot if I want to. I could also split a lot. So I'm going to say 200 pounds of this lot and the balance of that lot. So I'm able to record uh, multiple lots against a, a single item. So I would just continue this process of say 300 of these and I would pick the appropriate lot that's being done. I also have the ability to say issue all which would simply copy all the quantity from the quantity required and put it into the issue now for me. 
Uh, if I need to substitute a raw material, I don't have this malt and I'm going to use another malt, I can certainly do that. I can also add a line item that otherwise wasn't there previously. So here I've got an ingredient. I can even move it up or down on the formula and I can come in and add another, uh, another item here. Uh, say I'm going to add smalt 5 here and I can add you know, 10 pounds as an example to the process. Pick up my lot and I'm good. So that's all it took to record my raw material usage. Uh, my output or the, the product that I'm going to be putting on hand is uh, right here in the end items area. So I'm expecting to get 40, 50 barrels. Uh, let's assume that I'm going to transfer 48. I can actually tell the system where I'm transferring it to. So these are all vessels that I could set up in my system. So I've got fermentation vessel one, and I'm going to put on hand, say, 48 barrels. And that's all there is to it. I just hit the post button and inventory is settled. Uh, so um, really, really straightforward. I'm recording the output here, and I'm recording the inputs here on my procedure section. Now let's uh, progress forward and just uh, do the exact same thing for fermentation. It's the same screen, same functionality. Um, I could go back to the calendar and, and pick it up from the calendar, or I could do a look up here and pick up my fermentation log. In this case, in fermentation, I'm probably going to be consuming a certain amount of wort, uh, maybe some yeast. Uh, if I'm dry hopping, I can record my dry hops here. Uh, and if I'm going to be doing uh, uh, reclaiming my yeast and I'm tracking that, I can uh, do use a byproduct to put yeast back on hand. So I'm just simply entering the quantities and hitting post, and those are, uh, are then decremented from inventory at that moment. Same concept coming from the... Um, like we saw in the brew log and the fermentation log, we're now going to transfer to a bright vessel. In this case, I've got uh, a bright tank, bright tank two, and I want to take this and say 48, um, 48 barrels is going into that bright tank, and I can hit post, and that just updates my uh, fermentation log, uh, putting uh, bright beer on hand. The final process that I want to talk about is a packaging log. Uh, so it's very similar to what we've been uh, looking at so far, where we have a procedure, in other words, the usage of a raw material. So this is a usage of bright beer. So I guess I had come in earlier and said I'm, I'm using 185.5 barrels of this bright beer. That's the consumption. I just put it in my issue now. And then my end item is a little bit different for a finished good. It's very common to have multiple finished goods being recorded against the same packaging log. So I'm doing bottles, cans, and kegs against this bright tank. Uh, and so from the, uh, we also support the containerization that is attached to that. So I've got bottles, labels, uh, carrier shippers, crowns, etc. As I record quantities, say in my complete now, I'm hoping to get 972 cases out. Let's say that I get 950. What the system has done is it's about to put 950 cases on hand. It's also suggesting that I must have used these packaging items. That's on a straight uh, consumption basis. In other words, there's 24 of those per case in this case. And so um, I can even override that if I want to. I could actually say I used uh, uh, 23,000 of these, these units. So I can override it for loss purposes. So all I'm really doing is entering a complete now. I, uh, the system will come up with an issue now for me. I can override that for loss and I would just continue that process for the rest of the items that I'm putting on hand. Once I post it, I'm done and everything's good to go. Uh, one thing to note about all the transactions that we perf we do, whether it be on a, a brew log, fermentation log, or packaging log, they're all individual transactions. And each one of these transactions can be undone. So I've got an undo transaction. So if I made a mistake, I can reverse the act the the effect of that transaction. This happens to be a usage transaction of a particular lot of inventory. Um, and what it would do um, is... Uh, put the inventory back on hand, bringing um, the dollars uh, and adjusting the dollars for the batch and then allow me to consume more inventory or a different lot or whatever. So uh, know that that's that simple. Um, it, whether you're talking about a brew log, fermentation log, or a packaging log, the process is the same. Uh, you go into one batch entry screen and record the results. And a batch can be created from a calendar or it can be created directly from the uh, the log, uh, the, the entry screen, the batch entry screen itself. So I hope this is helpful. Let us know if you've got any questions regarding uh, creation or updating of brew logs or fermentation logs or packaging logs.